In this video, we're going to look at log equations, uh, which are equations that have a variable inside a log function or a natural log function. Um, we are going to look at two different ways or two different types of log equations. Uh, one is if you can write the equation uh, by combining all the logs. So get the log by itself, combine all the logs. I um, mean, if that's the case, we're going to change it to exponential form. And the other case is going to be if we, you can get a log of something is equal to a log of something. Um, and that means that we're going to um, set what's inside the log equal to each other because these are fu functions. A, a log logarithm is a function. So if you put the same number into the function, you always will get um, the same number out of the function. Okay, and then very important here is that we check our answers uh, to make sure it works in the original equation because we will have um, occasionally extraneous solutions. Um, and part of the reason for that, or really the reason for that, is because you cannot have a negative number inside a log function. It's outside of its domain. Uh, so it'll a negative number, or if you try to take the log of a negative number, uh, it is undefined. And so although it may look like a solution through your algebra, it is not one. Okay, so um, let's look at this one here. Um, if we want to write this as a exponent, we start by looking at the base. Uh, the base is e on a natural log, so we write that e. And then we just pull the old switcheroo on this, so this is going to be e to the first is equal to 2 plus x. And then after you do that, once you get to that step, then it's just like an equation you've solved before, uh, hopefully or probably anyway. And in this case, you just need to subtract 2 to get x by itself. And x is equal to e minus 2. Now, this is an exact answer. If we want to get an approximate answer, then just type that expression into your calculator. Uh, so I'll do that real quick. Although, I guess... E is you know 2.718, so you could have probably done that in your head if you have E memorized. And we'll just round it, um, we'll round it there. And then when you check your answer, you want to go back and just make sure that when you plug this in, this is not undefined. So really, you're only looking if there's a negative here, although it'd be wise to check it completely and type all of this in the calculator with this for x and make sure you get approximately one you won't get one uh, because you've rounded a little bit and you might be able to check that one in your head with this because natural log of e is one okay so pause the video try number seven number seven we're going to have the base is x and then we pull the old switcheroo and so we have the log sorry log base x of 18 is equal to 2 turns to log or sorry um, x squared is equal to 18 and then we can uh, square root both sides uh, to find what this base is And so normally we would say plus or minus the square root of 18. However, um, we don't we can't have a negative base just by definition of logs. So we're going to throw out the negative one and just say x is equal to the square root of 18. And then we can simplify that. Uh, 9 times 2 is 18. And the square root of 9 is 3. So that's 3 squared of 2, um, or the approximate answer would be 4.24. Uh, and we'll do one more, 4.243. So there's a quick example of extraneous solution because we have a negative here for x but we can't have a negative for our base of the exponent or base of the log. Can number eight 
this is the case where I have a log and it's equal to a log. Now, because the bases are the same, these, these are functions, and that means what's inside the logs must be equal. So there's not really an operation that cancels. And in fact, that's just kind of a bad word in math, although we use it a lot. So instead of, you're not going to like cancel necessarily, uh, but we can set what's inside the logs equal to each other. And then solve uh, how we know how to solve equations. This is a quadratic. Um, I'm going to move everything to the right to set it equal to zero. That makes my x squared positive. And then two numbers that multiply to negative 24 and add to 2 are uh, 6 and then negative 4. And so that gives me solutions. X equals negative 6 or X is equal to positive 4. Now this is another reason you have to check your solutions um, is when I take negative 6 and plug it back into here, um, I get 2 times negative 6, which is negative 12, and you can't take the log of a negative number. So that log base 3 of negative 12 would break this function. It would not work. And so negative 6, although it looks like a solution, it's a potential solution or extraneous solution. It is not. Uh, 4 will work. It doesn't make those negatives. So and although you, I'm not going to type these in your calculator here, it'd be a good idea to type uh, log base 3 of 2 times 4 and, and then get a decimal and then type that in here with four and get a decimal and make sure that works. Okay, number, uh, the next three, 9, 10, 11, we're not gonna bother with the decimals, but do pause the video and see if you can do these on your own. So here on number nine, uh, this logs already by itself. So the base is 10. Remember, if there's no number there, it's 10. And then we pull the old switcheroo. So it's 10 squared is equal to x squared. Um, and you might just be able to see that right now. Well, that means that um, x is equal to plus or minus 10. Um, but let's go ahead and square that just because I think that's the step most people will take. And then when you square root this time, when I have plus or minus, it ends up being okay. So X is either positive 10 or negative 10. And when we check that with our solution or our original equation, that is going to take that negative 10 and square it. Um, and so in that case, that value um, works for this equation because that negative is going to be a positive before you take that log. And yeah, that's fine. Okay, on number 10, uh, number 10, we want to try to um, get the logs um, together. So let's go ahead and subtract. 3 log x from both sides. So this gives you log x to the fifth minus 3 log x and then is equal to 4. And then we're going to have to use some properties of logs. So this 3 can go up here and become x to the third. I should give myself a little more room on this one. And then when I subtract logs of the same base, my rule is I can write it as division. So I'm going to go up, move this up a little bit higher. I have x to the fifth over x cubed is equal to 4. So now we can write this as a... Um, exponent. So this is 10 to the fourth is equal. So 10 is the base, switch these. And then x to the fifth over x cubed. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just simplify that and write it as x squared when we subtract exponents. And then now we can take the square root 
of 10 to the 4th. 10 to the 4th would be 10,000. As if you, you don't really have to write that out, but um, you can, obviously. And then the square root of that is just 100. Now, the plus or minus. So we took the square root of both sides. So you do, to, you do have a negative option here. Uh, but, but if we look back even, you know, to, to here, to the original equation is probably the best spot. If you look right here, if I plug in negative 10, that's going to break that function. So that negative 10 is, a, or negative 100, sorry, it's going to break that function. And so that is an extraneous solution. And we can throw that plus or minus out and only use x equals 100. Okay, then on number 11, uh, combine these would be the first step. And if you want to pause the video and try this one, if you haven't, uh, do that. But combine these, so that gives me log base 7x is equal to log base 7. And then it'd be 10 over x minus 3. Because we subtract, we divide. Now, one thing just to kind of be aware of is, you know, if we would compare 10 and 11, we did two different things. So we had logs on both sides. In this one, we subtracted and moved it over. And in this one, we combined them. So how did I know to do one and then the other? Well, one is just practice, right? I've done, I've done a lot, solved a lot of log equations, so I can kind of recognize um, what it is. I also wrote these, so I'm trying to pick out different types. Uh, but the other, the reason why is because really just trial and error also. So I was able to subtract this over and I knew I was going to have a four left on one side. So that would set up to be like an equ equation that looked kind of like number seven. Um, but here I saw that, well, I could like subtract this over and then add this over or maybe subtract one of them, but I would still have a log on the other side. So instead you can look at it and say, well, if I combine these and write it as one log, then I have an equation that looks like this, something that looks like number eight. So keep in mind, we have those two different types of log equations. Ones we either write by a log or write as an exponent or have a log by itself or set the logs equal to each other. And you just kind of have to keep in mind what you're working towards. Okay, so now I have this equation, x is equal to 10 over x minus three, which is kind of a tough equation to solve algebraically. Um, but we can do it. We're going to use cross multiplication. So let's put that over one. Um, distribute the x to give x squared minus 3x is equal to 10. And then subtract this over x squared minus 3x minus 10 is equal to zero. Now, most of the time we'll write these so these factor nicely um, because we're not going to to have to do the quadratic equation here uh, or complete the square would just be kind of messy, but it, it could happen. But this one factors, this is X um, minus five and then X plus two, two numbers that multiply to 10 and add to negative three. And so that gives me X is equal to five uh, or X is equal to negative two. But we have to check our answers here so I have negative, I have five, then that's positive five. That one's just a number. And this one is um, five minus three. So that's two. So that's okay. So five seems to work. You could check it and make sure um, by typing in your calculator, getting the approximate values. And then X equals negative two. Uh, if I plug negative two in right here, it's going to break this side of the equation. And so this is extraneous, and we throw that one out. Okay, good luck solving log equations.